beautiful people welcome back so for today's video if you guys did see my previous two videos you guys know and it kind of explains why i haven't been really uploading as much and that is obviously because i'm pregnant um i am super super nervous super super excited there's so many emotions that you know that i think about on a, like a day-to-day -day basis however for today's video i wanted to mainly focus on my first trimester kind of update um i'm now currently in my second trimester but I wanted to go ahead and update you guys on how my first trimester went and all of that. And pretty much just let you guys know how, how it went. So, as you guys seen in the first video, I did find out April 7th. And then I did end up telling my family, I want to say about a week later. I told them on April 12th or 13th. I'm really not too sure the dates exactly. And then after that had happened, I didn't have my first prenatal visit, as in face-to-face, -face, until... May 13 it was originally and then when I called the doctor to try and get some more information he ended up moving it up to May 11th so I had my first prenatal face-to-face -face visit May 11th but before that um I guess and obviously I am new to this I'm, I didn't know what exactly to do I didn't know you know I didn't know pretty much what to do I, you know I had never been pregnant before so I didn't know exactly what I had to do or what had to be done um, however, I did have friends, you know, that were pregnant, and, um, my cousin, she was pregnant, but I didn't tell her, I didn't ask her questions, just because, obviously, I didn't tell my family yet, um, so I was, you know, keeping in contact with my friends, and I was asking them, okay, what do I do, like, you know, asking them a whole bunch of questions, so they did say that I had to call my doctor and let them know, that way I can schedule my first appointment, so when I called, I let them know, you know, that I took an at-home pregnancy test, it came out positive, so where do I go from there, and then they did tell me, that they were going to schedule a phone call with me and with one of the nurses just asking me questions, you know, about family history and all of that. So that day, I'm not sure what day that was or how many days after it was, but I did have the phone visit or the phone call, whatever. And she just pretty much asked you a whole bunch of questions. You have to say yes, no, yes, no. It just, it's really, really boring actually. And then she tells you, she goes based off of the day of your first last period the first day of your last period so she goes based on that and then she tells you how far along you are so I think at that time I was four weeks and four days as I mentioned in the first video and then and then after that that's when she tells you when your first prenatal visit will be and I want to say you have to be about eight to nine weeks maybe in order for you to go to your first prenatal visit um, so obviously you did know we were in quarantine so it was a little bit hard Sorry, I just had to make sure my mic is connected. I don't know if the mic is connected. Hopefully it is and it's better audio. Um, but, so, like I was saying, as you guys know, we are in quarantine. So, to me, the time was going by so slow. Like, I would literally look at the day. I'm like, oh my God, it's barely one day. Oh my God, it's barely the next day. Like, I wanted it to go by so fast. I think for the fact that I just wanted to see, like, my little baby in the ultrasound and stuff. Um... But I feel like it was going by so, so, so slow. And all of my friends were like, it's going to go by fast. I'm like, no, I feel like it's going by so slow because we're in quarantine and I'm not doing anything. So I just, I thought it was going super, super slow. So I guess fast forward to when the day actually came. Between that time that I did find out, um, I guess the only symptoms that I did have were my boobs were like a little bit like sore. But that is pretty much it. I didn't get any morning sickness. I wasn't vomiting. I wasn't, I didn't have no symptoms actually, to be quite honest with you guys. And I didn't really like think much about it. But when I started thinking about it, I'm like, okay, I feel like when girls have symptoms, that's their way, that's their like body letting them know, okay, you're still pregnant. So for the fact that I didn't have morning sickness or I didn't have any symptoms besides my boobs hurting, which I guess that's my body telling me, okay, hey, you're pregnant. I did get kind of scared because I didn't have the symptoms. So I'm like, oh my God, how do I know that I am pregnant? Or how do I know this? Or how do I know that? And I know one time my brother-in-law asked me like, how do you feel? And I told him like, honestly, I feel fine. He's like, so how do you know you even are pregnant? And when he said that, you know, because I had already been like kind of thinking about it, it kind of like, I kind of stepped back and I did talk to my mom. I'm like, hey, is it like normal? She's like, yeah, my mom has three girls. And with all of her pregnancies, she didn't get any symptoms. So I'm like, okay, I'm okay. So I think that's why I was kind of, anxious of going to my first appointment to make sure that there was a baby um and to just 100 percent like clarify you know that oh yes i am pregnant um so 
I didn't have any morning sickness in my first trimester and still even up to this day um, I'll kind of go in order and I'll update you guys from then till now but going back I had my first appointment which was May 11th I go again I didn't know what to do I didn't know what to expect I didn't know what they do in your first appointment I was just hoping I was gonna get an ultrasound which I did um, so I ended up getting there you have to check in I want to say they give you a little um, thing to pee in a cup so they gave me that <clears throat> and then you have to obviously like just wait until they call your name so they call your name they do the transvaginal which they stick like a long tube inside of you it is very uncomfortable it was very uncomfortable for me so they stick it like inside of you and they do the ultrasound and I seen my little baby and I'll insert like a picture of the first ultrasound that I got which was the first my first first ultrasound that I got I'll insert it in somewhere in here and then after that that's when she ended up telling me I was eight weeks and one day so when she told me I was eight weeks and one day I have that what to expect app if there is an app that I um, downloaded it's called what to expect and again it asks you for the first day of your last period so I went ahead and I inputted um, all that information and it told me I was eight days eight weeks and five days so when I went to the doctor I was four days kind of backtracked um, so I was like okay so now I have to go based off of the days that the doctor told me so after that um, I did do blood work and then that was pretty much it for my first appointment I feel like it went pretty fast which I was kind of shocked because a lot of people had told me and I had been like researching online that like your first appointment is always the longest but they ask you they go over like pretty much a whole bunch of stuff and I was kind of shocked just because of my first appointment it was maybe like 20 minutes it was super fast she really didn't like go over certain things with me I, d I was able to ask her questions because um, I know a few people have told me I wasn't able to eat fruit like in my first trimester like watermelon and melon which I love fruit so th that's one of the questions that I did ask her if it was okay to go swimming because I was told that I wasn't able to go swimming so I just asked her like maybe like three questions that was about it so I was kind of like shocked of how fast it went I would have thought she would have gave me a little bit more information to be quite honest but I'm like okay she told me you know like, everything's fine oh and then I did hear the heartbeat um, and the only thing that sucks is because of everything going on, um, my fiance wasn't able to go into the room with me, so I had to go by myself, so he wasn't able to hear the heartbeat in person with me. However, I did ask if I can record because he wasn't able to go in there with me, and they did let me. Um, so I'll insert in a little video of the heartbeat as well. Hopefully I know how to do that with the video. <laughs> I was able to do that so I heard the heartbeat she told me everything was okay and then she told me when my next appointment was so after that again that was May 11th so still time had passed by between my second appointment was June 8th so a month had passed um, and still I didn't have really any symptoms I did notice that my boobs were getting a little bit more like sore but other than like throwing up and all of that I didn't I didn't have any or I didn't throw up I should say so moving on, June 8th, I had my second appointment, and for that one, it was the genetic testing. They did ask me on my phone call visit if I wanted to do the genetic testing, the first appointment or the second appointment. It was totally up to me. I didn't have to do it at all. I can do it whenever I wanted, so I just thought, you know, I just want to, you know, do it just, just to do it, whether something came out, came back, you know, that something was wrong, no matter what, I'm still going to love my baby no matter what. So even if those test results did come back and there was something wrong, it wouldn't have meant any different to me. But, you know, I just did it just to kind of get it out of the way. So that's what my second appointment consisted of was the genetic testing. Um, so I went into that one, again, not knowing how they did. I know that she told me that they take, like, the, ba the baby's, um, like, neck measurements or something. And I was, for that appointment, I was hoping I would get another ultrasound just because I had already been eight weeks until that day. So I was obviously more far along. So the baby was obviously going to look more like a baby. Um, so when I went, this time it was like a regular ultrasound over the belly. So you don't have to get like completely undressed. Oh, and I did forget to mention that first appointment, I had to get completely naked under the gown. Um, just because they check your boobs and they just check everything, you know, like just they pretty much do kind of like a physical. They check your boobs and all of that. Um, but the, for the second appointment, she just had me roll my, my shorts down a little bit just because it's on top of the belly. So she was doing the ultrasound and she had just said she was going to be taking the, the baby's measurements 
and then she would show me the screen. Um, again, that doctor really, really didn't really say much. Um, she was just kind of doing her own thing, and then after she did show me the screen, and she said, like, it was just weird the way that I guess she was showing me. Like, it's kind of like she just wanted me to get out of there. Um, like, let's just say this is like... This is like the baby. She's like, oh, that's the heartbeat, that's the back, that's the spine, that's the legs, that's the head. Any questions? And then that's like pretty much it. So I like, I kind of felt like she didn't want me to ask like many questions because it seemed like she just wanted me to get the heck out of there. So I really didn't ask questions. I think I had asked, oh, because I did hear that if you get blood work done, the baby's gender like comes out in it. So that's why I didn't want because I'm going to have a gender reveal party. So I didn't want that. So that, that was the only question that I asked. And she told me no. And she didn't even let me finish that question that I asked. And she's right away said no. She's like, no. This is only the genetic testing. And I was like, okay. So they did end up giving me another ultrasound. The only thing that I didn't like with both ultrasounds is they came out really, really blurry. You can clearly tell that it's a baby. You can clearly tell where the things are. But just to me, it didn't seem like a really clear ultrasound compared to other ones that I've seen. Again, I'll insert in a picture of the second ultrasound that they gave me, which was June 8th. Um, so when they gave me that one, I was 14 weeks and 5 days. So now what the doctors were telling me and my app, now they were matching up. So I, it was easier for me to go based off of my app. Um, and now I'm currently 15 weeks and 2 days. So again, I'm obviously in my second trimester. Wait, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, 15 weeks and 2 days. And I'm super, super, super excited. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys like a little update. Um... I guess up until now, I like I did mention, I'm on 15 weeks and two days. I turn 15. I turn a week every Wednesday. Um, the only thing now that I did notice, and towards the end of like my first trimester, is I started getting really, really bad headaches. And I knew that she had told me that I can take a certain kind of medicine, but I couldn't remember where I left that after visit somewhere that they give you. And I, my mom had told me obviously because she's had three kids. She had told me that I can take Tylenol. But I wanted to find that paper just to make sure. So I ended up finding it. I ended up seeing that I can take Tylenol. So I ended up taking that. And then after that, I was getting them pretty frequently for about two weeks. But my mom did say it was because I wasn't eating good. I wasn't drinking enough water. Which I know it probably was because of that. I do have to get in the habit of drinking a lot more water. I have like my little hydro flask. I think this is 42 ounces. So I, I do a pretty good job at like finishing that. And I'll probably like drink... A couple of waters as well but I do have to get in the habit of um, you know drinking a little bit more more water another thing too is eating I guess more because they say that you have to eat like three big meals and like three snacks throughout the day again obviously not just eat out on the street and all this stuff which I've been doing really good I haven't really been eating out I've been eating more like fruits and I, I have to get again in the habit of eating like a little bit more veggies but I have been eating a lot more veggies than I used to before I got pregnant um, obviously because I just want to keep my baby healthy. Um, and then I guess up until now, I think I started seeing my boobs get a little bit bigger. Not like extremely bigger, but I can tell that they've been getting bigger because I, I had really small boobs. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Like, I feel like I've been having like a really, really good pregnancy. Oh, another thing is I had no energy in my first semester. Like, I was tired all the time to the point where... I would wake up around maybe like 9, 10, 11. I would eat and then I would want to go to sleep. Like I didn't want to get up. I didn't do my makeup. That's another reason why I wasn't recording. I just didn't have the energy to record or to do anything, anything, anything. And I was like, oh my God, like I don't want my whole pregnancy to be like this, you know, because I do plan on going back to work. Um, so I don't want to have no energy to not do my makeup. But now that I'm in my second trimester again, it's only been about almost two weeks. But I've had a little bit more energy and I've been, you know getting up and doing more things um but yeah that's pretty much it i just wanted to go ahead and update you guys on how my first trimester went like i did mention again i had it really really easy and i feel like i'm pretty much my whole pregnancy is going to be really really easy cross my fingers knock on wood i don't want to jinx myself but again i just wanted to go ahead and update you guys on how my first trimester of my pregnancy went i am now in my second trimester and obviously i will do a second trimester update and then a third trimester update um i guess i'll go ahead and show you guys my little belly again i'm 15 weeks and two days it's really not big but a lot of people say that you can tell that i'm pregnant now so i'm gonna go ahead and show you so this right here is my little belly you can't really tell i feel like when i eat after i'm done eating you can tell a little bit more but you can't really tell 
I mean, I wasn't like the skinniest before I got pregnant, but now, obviously, now I'm I'm starting to tell that I do have like a little stomach. Um, again, because it's my body and I see myself like every day, so I can tell a little bit of a difference. But I can't wait till my belly gets bigger, and I'm. I am gonna go to one of like the studios that you find out the gender a little bit earlier. So I am finding out on the 28th, which is a Sunday. So I will be 15 weeks and four days. Yes, 15 weeks and four days. And then I have my gender reveal on 4th of July, which I'll be 16 weeks and three days. Um, I don't necessarily know. I don't think, I'm not even gonna say I don't think. I know for sure I'm not going to record like my labor and delivery just because I know that the Kaiser that I go to, they're really strict, especially now with everything going on. I don't know how it's going to be in December. Oh yeah, I didn't even let you guys know. I am due December 16th. So, you know, we still have a couple of months to go, but we don't know how it's going to be with this whole, you know, COVID-19 stuff. Hopefully it does die down by then because I do want my mom and my fiance to be in the room with me. Um... But yeah, that is pretty much just a update of how my first trimester of my pregnancy has been going. I wanted just to go ahead and let you guys know, you know, what's been going on, my symptoms, and all of that. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you guys are not already. And that is pretty much all I have to say, and I will see you guys on the next one.